A lot has changed since the 90s. Well, that is, except for Halifax's public transportation system. Until now. In their new plan called Moving Forward Together, Halifax Transit is proposing a new transit network for our public transportation system. It's a 102-page document. But who really has the time to read through all this? You know, we'd like to explain it to you right now through the magic of video. <laughs> transit is a bit of a tricky process. To start, it's better to think about the transit system as a whole network rather than focusing on individual routes. There's a lot of variables to consider and a lot of people that could be pissed off. We've tried to condense those variables into three main concepts. One concept in transit design is this idea of high ridership versus coverage. For high ridership, you might want to treat transit like a business and only invest in routes that see a lot of users, like the 1 or the 7. But making transit a popularity contest would leave quite a few people out and have a network that really only covers the downtown. For great coverage, on the other hand, you'd want your system to cover as much land as possible. But in the process, you'd spread your resources way too thin and end up with a system that's really expensive compared to the number of people using it. This is how Halifax Transit currently operates. Halifax Transit's new plan starts by proposing 10 key ridership focused routes called corridors. These corridor routes make up the spine of transit network. They're direct, frequent, and expected to be quite popular. They're also the condensed version of many different routes that connects the terminals already. For example, Barrington Street, which currently sees about 16 bus routes, is now condensed into three routes. Branching off from them are the local routes, the local routes increase the coverage of the network by connecting more remote neighborhoods to the corridor routes. Halifax Transit mentions a transfer-based system quite a bit in their plan. But what does it mean? Well, here's an example. If you have three communities that need to get to three different locations, it's much more efficient to have a transfer point in between them than to give each community its own route to each destination. On the other hand, a transfer-based system requires transfers, and you could argue that, regardless of the cost, people like to have a one-seat trip to their destination without the uh, hassle of getting on another bus. In the current system, the Halifax Transit Network is mostly based on single-seat trips, resulting in a lot of overlapping and confusing routes. Remember how Barrington Street has 16 routes, and that's not even including the express buses. In the new plans, Halifax Transit definitely embraces the more of a transit-based system without forgetting coverage. Local routes take their users to transit terminals where they are able to transfer onto corridor routes that will take them to other parts of the city and then take a corridor bus with other passengers. However, during rush hours from 6 to 9 and 3 to 6, it doesn't make sense for one full local bus to unload and load onto a new corridor bus at transit points. So instead, during those times, local buses still take their pass to the nearest terminal but then continue straight to the downtown, skipping all stops along the way served by quarter buses. It's essentially a beefed up version of a current system, moving faster between local collection areas and the downtown core. Unreliable transit really sucks. Halfax Transit is no stranger to this, with buses arriving late or not even showing up at all. One way to address this is to prioritize public transit through projects that gives them the upper edge in beating other traffic, such as bus lane, queue jumps, or transit signal priority. However, these projects are pretty costly to implement, and they tend to be fairly politically controversial issues. Admittedly, we're kind of sensitive when it comes to road space and traffic problems. The main reason buses slow down in Halifax is because they get caught up in traffic downtown. The new plan addresses this specifically with the local routes. By sticking to short, predictable paths that usually don't see much traffic, the local routes are much more reliable. In addition to this, GPS signals are being added to each bus to allow riders to track their buses in real time. The plan doesn't really talk about implementing any transit priority measures, which is a shame, but they do mention that queue jumping lanes should be looked into for the future plan. So there are some of the factors around transit planning. Here's our opinion. If you really think about it, transit 
planning is about maintaining a balance. There needs to be a balance between getting the best bang for our buck in our transit system and making sure the network covers an appropriate amount of area. A transfer-based system is efficient and flexible, but it can only go so far in a city designed like Halifax, and we should understand when and where it makes sense to have those direct one-seat trips as well. Finally, buses aren't the only form of transportation out there, but it's important to understand that they're not private vehicles. They're part of a network, and it makes sense to give them some priority for a reliable transit system. There's no one way to do it, and there's no way you're going to please everyone, but maybe, just maybe, a happy medium can be found in each of these concepts. The main thing to remember here is that none of this plan is set in stone. The network that we described to you is simply a draft and Help Us Transit will be hosting public consultation over the next couple of months. Whether you support the redesign or not, we strongly suggest you put your two cents in at maketransitbetter.ca or at any of the 14 public consultation sessions. We're plan effects and this will tell me move forward together.